So yes, I'm a filmmaker, a writer, director, editor, producer. When you do independent films, you pretty much do it all. And you get to call yourself a predator, or producer, director, editor. Um, so you guys, I hope you're here because you love movies, or you love TV, or you love storytelling. And the, the uh, specific paradigm of screenwriting, um, it's not difficult, but there's, there's some uh, formatting to, to learn. But the, the main thing is have a story, understand what needs to be in there, and tell it. So uh, are you guys all planning to participate in the, the film festival? Yeah, yeah. Good. Well, let's talk about stories and films. A good film, the ones we like to watch, the ones we would like watch over and over again, have a good story. There are some good looking movies that have a weak story. You probably don't grab that DVD and or you, you know, it's, it's the ones that have the story that really get to you. There are a lot of different types of stories. Narrative. That's that's my favorite. It's storytelling. It's think what once upon a time there was a high schooler went to an early start uh, seminar, and, and then and then something happened. Uh, and, and within that, there's comedies. Comedies do really well at, at festivals because people want to laugh. The audience is on your side, so give them what they want. That said, dramas are always good, especially if you can really surprise them and, and touch someone's heart and then bring out an emotion. Action movies are fun and they can be both comedy or drama. Uh, another type of films that uh, uh, we're looking for at the festival next spring here um, is documentaries. Now documentaries are uh, a slice of true life. Either it's about a person or an event or an issue. I think the trick in a good documentary is in the edit. How do you unfold something that's just a true life matter in a way that's compelling. It still still tells a story. Uh, music videos. Anybody planning to do a music video? If you do, you have to have rights to the music. Um, and in fact, any, any video you do, I mean, if it's just for yourself or your friends, that's fine. You can grab your favorite song. But if you ever want to display it, uh, you know, present it at a venue, especially if they're going to sell tickets, you got to have the rights to that music, otherwise they, they just won't be able to show it. The, the musician has to get paid, or at least authorize it. Animation. Anybody here an animator? I animate. There's a lot of different kinds. Digital stuff is, um, you know, that's what all the Pixar movies are. Most of the big screen stuff are, are digital animation. Good old fashioned hand-drawn stuff, that's like the old Disney movies. Stop motion's a lot of fun, and there's... Uh, you can use clay figures. Um, we know a filmmaker who does, uh, uh, he does a little bit of an experimental animation. He, he set up an uh, animation hotline, he calls it, and it's an answering machine. And you can call it and just leave a message, whatever you want to talk about. And if he likes your message, he does these incredible chalk drawings, and then that, that's the video, is, is it's stop motion chalk drawing, and the audio is your message playing on his answering machine. And it could be anything. And it's, it's, a, it's different and really pretty incredible. He's had a real nice uh, festival run. And I would call that maybe an experimental film, although experimental is, you know, it needs to evoke an emotion, maybe a mood. We saw one film where it was uh, a woman by a stream, and she was standing on a rock doing an interpretive dance for 45 minutes. And it was, it did evoke a mood, I think, but um, it did not make the festival that we were. Where do your stories come from? Anybody have a story in mind? You think, I've always wanted to make a movie about Uncle Joe. Or, So, you know, tap into your family stories. Is there a favorite made-up story that your mom or dad told you when you were a kid? Maybe maybe it was sweet, but you've got a haunted, twisted take on it. You could start with that. Um, is there a character in your life, a friend or a 
uncle or an aunt or a nephew or a niece. Um, look at the news, and, you know, the current events. A lot of your crime stories on TV and in the movies start with a true event that was in the newspaper and that sparks somebody's idea and they expand on that to a full, full project. So how do you keep track of your ideas? How do you flesh them out into a full-blown story? Well, I sort of said, well, you, you have a, a notebook and, and you know, and jot it down. And I thought, well, kids today aren't going to carry a notebook, but they do carry a phone and uh, keep notes on it. And so if you have an idea or you're at uh, lunch and the table over somebody says something hilarious or strangely, and it's a snip of the dialogue that you think, oh, that, I don't remember that one. Um, I go to the rec center and work out, and these three guys come in almost every day, and they're just laughing all the time. And they have this catchphrase, one guy's like going, shroosh, shroosh, and the other guy's just laughing. And I, they're just so pure, and I thought, I've got to put those guys in a film, or that, that little weirdness. <laughs> Find some creative writing time. You know, every, a few minutes every day is better than trying to marathon it on a Sunday, you know. But, so if you find a time to force yourself to sit down and just write anything, some free form, or, or try to make a progress on the story you're working on. And stories come from anywhere, everywhere. Be receptive to the stories. So um, let's... Uh, uh, what kind of application is used for this? This is, uh, I use Final, uh, final Draft. It's the industry standard, and uh, um, yeah, it costs some money to, but, and there are some free versions on the internet. I'll, I'll touch on that toward the end. So, um, the opening line to that is called a slug line, and it just establishes uh, place and time. So, exterior, high plains of eastern Colorado day. And that's a standard, uh, you know, how you was, uh, um, it's important to say day, night, dusk, evening, candlelight, something, because if you've got a big crew and the guy doing your lighting, uh, he just, he doesn't really care about the dialogue, he care, cares about how he's supposed to light it. And so he needs to know that it's daytime lighting. In intersection two, lonely country roads. It's a four-way stop. Sporty convertible sits at one of the stop signs behind him is a plain Jane pickup truck. Are you starting to see what's going on here? Both vehicles are idling. Interior, David's truck, continuous. Continuous just means the lighting is essentially the same. We're just, we haven't shifted to later in the day or anything. David is in the driver's seat of the truck. He is in his 20s, he wears a baseball cap, and he has a tattoo around his bicep. He's starting to get a sense. Notice what I'm not saying. I'm not saying, David's pondering uh, the, the, the high school prom that he always wished he'd asked that one girl, you know? Just, just what you're going to see is all in the screenplay. David blinks too much. Blink, blink. He studies the bald head of the driver in front of him. And then here's our first line of dialogue. What's with this guy? Drums his finger on the steering wheel. Let's go, no nuts. I, I originally had some profanity in here, and I was advised for film festivals try to make a PG-13 because you get a wider audience that way. Um, as opposed to R or G. As opposed to yeah, right. I, I mean, this, my character in my head, he can drop f bombs, but you know, I don't need I don't need them for my story, and uh, works better without it. Probably. He honks the horn, no response. He peers at the other guy. There appears to be a wire dangling from the other guy's ear. Hang up and drive, Baldy. So, that's, we're, we're barely a page and a half into it. So that's about a minute and a half of footage. Let's see what it looks like. Has anybody ever read a screenplay before? Yeah, a couple of them. Anybody written a screenplay before? News. 
I've wrote stories before, but not screenplays. Well, you're ahead of the game. It's not too hard to adapt it. Can we dim lights, do you think?
a good story has an arc. So what you see at the beginning, hopefully that character, that situation changes. We want to take you on a little journey and make it feel like you went somewhere. Good stories usually have a beginning, a middle, and an end. That said, shorts, you can get away with just having, boom, one situation, you're in, you experience it, and you're out in a nice, quick um, moment in time. 